Dear colleagues, welcome to the Semi-Life Procedure. And this one concerns a 61-year-old male with silent jaundice and weight loss and a bilirubin of 320 micromoles per liter. Imaging showed on the CT thorax abdomen a lesion in the pancreatic head of about 20 millimeters and a grossly dilated bowel duct. So patient was discussed at our MDT pancreas and the lesion was deemed to be borderline resectable, though neoadjuvant chemotherapy would be needed. In order to facilitate this, an ERCP was ordered for biliary drainage, but unfortunately the papilla was located near a diverticulum, required precut sphincterotomy, and in the end deep cannulation filled. Drainage options were re-evaluated and hepatogastrostomy was not preferred by the surgeon due to future surgery. EOS rendezvous technique remained as well as colitical dunanostomy and EOS end-grade stenting, as well as PTBD as a salvage option. So we chose for EOS biliary drainage. So welcome back to our endoscopy suite. This is, uh, this is the ERCP and the EOS room uh, at the Leiden University Medical Center. So let's uh, introduce the endoscope. I'm using a Fuji uh, linear EOS probe, which is quite flexible. We're going to pass the endoscope through the stomach towards the uh, duodenum and have a look at the common bile duct, which you can readily see here in the EOS image. When I start the uh, color doppler, you see that this is the common bile duct, and supposedly the um, hepatic artery uh, here at one o'clock, and down below the portal vein. And here the, the bile duct occludes, and here you see a tumor. We have the option of transduodenal drainage with uh, hot lamps. And now we're going to look at the uh, liver and see if he has also has uh, dilated intrahepatic bile ducts. So to evaluate if also an integrate uh, transhepatic approach is feasible. So we're going to aim for segment 2, 3, the left liver lobe, which is coming into view right now. And I think that also shows some dilated uh, intrahepatic ducts, like here. And for safe transhepatic integrate approach, we need about two to three centimeters of normal parenchyma um, before introducing the needle and the uh, guide wire. Uh, the guide wire is going to follow the biliary ducts up to the common bile duct, and then, which you can see here <laughs> down below, follows it down to the uh, uh, level of the obstruction. So I think we're going to use some, some x-ray as well uh, to see if um, the position is also favorable for an integrate approach. We're going to flip the patient fully over to uh, prone position. So it's always debatable uh, whether to do a transduodenal drainage with the uh, hot lamps, um, which is also quite fast. Um, but I would like to demonstrate the integrate approach as well, uh, because that leaves us with several options in case of failure. We can still do the transduodenal approach. We can still do uh, hepatogastrostomy with a um, with a hot lamps, um, and in case of the, uh, the patient developing gastric outlet obstruction, you don't have the problem with uh, food occluding the, the lamps uh, in case of a transduodenal approach. So I think this is a good position for US integrate drainage. I'd like the um, 90 gauge needle for access uh, in combination with the O35 straight guide wire. So here I'm a little bit more higher up in the stomach. Um, and as you can see on the fluoroscopic image, it is more um, towards liver segment two. And we have no significant intervening vessels here. And segment two is uh, in a large number of cases more in line with 
the common bile duct. So I think that's the, uh, the favored uh, approach. Be careful not to puncture through um, the esophagus towards the liver. So make sure that you're into uh, the stomach. Focusing on these dilated bile ducts again, and these are really bile ducts. There is no uh, flow with Doppler, no significant intervening vessels. So I think this is a good position. So the first step is going to, uh, to be uh, introducing the needle in the liver. Now we're going to aspirate a little bit of bile, and then I'm going to introduce uh, contrast via the needle. And afterwards, we're going to introduce the guide wire. And I think I'm in, so you may remove the stylet. Okay, we have bile. So next up is contrast, please. We're going to inject some contrast. And I'm going to show you with fluoroscopy that we're in the intrahepatic biliary system. So here you see the fluoroscopy image with the intrahepatic uh, biliary ducts filled and the common bile duct also filled. And you see tapering of the distal bile duct. Next up is the guide wire. I'm using a regular uh, ERCP straight 035 guide wire for this purpose. The tip is uh, hydrophilic, which I need for it to follow through and hopefully go down to the common bile duct. And here you see that it does. It will probably not pass through the, the, the duodenum, which is not necessary at this stage, but uh, we have access to the uh, central biliary system. I'm going to pull back the needle and you may push the guide wire a little bit further in. Okay, I'm going to retract the needle here. One moment. Okay, uh, we're going to do a long exchange now. This is always uh, a difficult point in the, in the entire procedure. Uh, so we're going to use fl fluoroscopy as well. And with my endoscopy uh, nurse is exchanging the needle. We're checking that the endoscope and the guide wire stay in place the entire time. So we're preparing the um, six French cystotome. And it can also serve as a, as a catheter because if I'm in the, in the liver, in the bile ducts, it gives me an anchoring point for guide wire to hopefully move it past the obstruction into the duodenum again. We uh, passed the uh, the cystotome uh, up until the level of the gastric wall and under fluoroscopy you can appreciate that um, the guide wire is still in and that the catheter is uh, just a little bit outside the working channel of the endoscope. So with uh, our Erby um, we use cystotome settings, so it's endocut 1, setting 2 and that should be enough to enter into the, the uh, liver, which we're going to do now. It's now inside. Kijk maar door. And try and move the cystotome further down. Perhaps a little bit of traction. Yeah, it may be that it's just lodged after uh, in a small bowel duct. But it's going down now into the distal bowel duct. And then we're going to try and maneuver our guide wire through the stenosis. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, pull back the guide wire. And try and pass the stenosis here. Yeah, and oh, give me some room to follow. Pull back a little bit, pull back a little bit, pull back a little bit, and try and move forwards. And I think we're through. But preferably we'd have a straight um, guide wire, so we're going to try and advance the guide wire some more. Fluoroscopy. Okay. Oh, it's straight in itself. So can we follow with the cystotome? So now we have a lot of resistance. But what we're going to do now is uh, try and advance the guide wire some, somewhat further in the duodenum, and then we're going to dilate the, the entire distal uh, part. So advance the guide wire, advance some more. It may be... Uh, in the proximal jejunum, but this uh, gives us optimal pushability and strength of the guide wire. 
most mechanical advantage. So we're introducing the dilation uh, balloon here through the stenosis. It's quite firm, so really have to keep the endoscope fixed to the gastric wall. Yes, and we're passing through, but I think it's now past the uh, papilla, so please start inflation. Yes, I think it... And now we're, yeah, it's a little bit past the, uh, the papilla. We're going to exchange for a six millimeters balloon and use this 10 millimeters uh, dilation balloon for post dilation if we have the, the stent uh, in place. Seems to work better. We're now going to pull back and go for SEMS placement in an integrate fashion. Can I have an uncovered six centimeters, 10 millimeter stent? Uncovered. In this case, I think that the chances of it, of the fully covered SEMS migrating again and the difficulties of uh, replacing it and the high a priori chance that this is, it is a malignant tumor um, justifies use of an uncovered metal stent. Firmly affixed to the gastric wall. And here you see the stent reduction system following gui the guide wire smoothly. Now a little bit more pressure. So we have to be careful, of course, not to create too much space between the endoscope and the liver. But we're through. Start deploying. So I'm going to apply some traction right now. So this is the point of no return, which is neatly um, noted in the delivery system. I think it's uh, quite well in position. And release further. And I think it's right in between the stenosis. We're going to release further and remove the safety. Otherwise, we're going to pull back the stent again. A final, but I think a crucial step in this procedure is, uh, like the interventional radiologists do, is post-dilation. We really want to make sure that the preference uh, uh, route of, of the bile is towards the duodenum and not in between the space of the liver and the gastric wall, of course, because then we have leakage. We're going to post-dilate the stent with the 10 millimeter dilation balloon that we've used before. So again, introduction of the dilation balloon. You see the contrast already flowing out of the uh, intrahepatic bile ducts. Try not to dislocate our stent, of course, but this seems to be right in between. Okay, and you may release now. Uh, make sure that we fully deflate the balloon before pulling back. Uh, of course, I don't want to dislocate the stent. And that we're going to remove the stent system. We don't have to do anything with the two millimeter hole we made in the liver because we had about three centimeters of passage through parenchyma. Um, so this will close. You don't need to place uh, pigtails, it will uh, keep leaking. You don't need to place a uh, metal stent in this case because we have adequate drainage. So this is, I hope, uh, a nice uh, demonstration of EOS integrate drainage with integrate placement of a self-expandable metal stent. Fortunately, patient could be discharged the next day without any signs of biliary peritoneal leakage and he is currently on neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So keep in mind that if you apply integrated biliary drainage, you have the option of integrate stenting as well as EOS hepatogristostomy if needed. Thanks for your attention and see you on the next one.